Welcome back to part two of our ray tracing video. Last time we talked about how ray tracers work. Now we'll implement one. Let's start with the basics, rays. We'll represent a ray with an origin P and a unit direction D. Then any point along the ray is given by the equation P plus TD. Next, let's define a function that returns the color of light seen along a ray. This function is the crux of the ray tracer. In addition to the ray parameters P and D, this function needs to know where all the objects are in the scene. This information is contained in the scene graph, which has all the objects, lights, and camera parameters. TraceRay computes the first intersection with the scene. Calculating these intersections can be quite involved. Here we only have five objects, but real scenes can have millions. For now, let's just assume that this intersect function is given to us. In addition to the point of intersection, we'll need the surface normal and the material properties. The intersect function will return all three of these quantities. Next, we will compute the intensity or color at that point. This is known as shading and computed by the shade function. This function requires a bit more information, the vector from the eye, as well as the direction to the light source and any other objects that could shadow Q. So we'll pass in the scene as an additional parameter. Finally, we'll return the result. So what does the shade function do? Let's dig into it. Many materials in the real world have a mix of diffuse and specular reflection. This apple, for example, can be approximated as a diffuse red sphere, plus a black sphere with a white specular highlight. As we saw in our videos on reflection, diffuse reflection is given by this equation where KD is the color of the surface, red in this case. This is the equation for specular reflection, and KS is the color of the highlight, white in this case. We'll use this diffuse and specular model. Now let's add in a shadow attenuation term. When the point is directly illuminated by the light source, the attenuation factor is one, meaning no light is lost. When it's blocked, we set it to zero. To implement this, we cast a ray from the point Q to the light source. If it intersects another object on the way, we calculate the first point of intersection Q prime and measure the length of that segment. If it's less than the distance to the light source, then the point is in shadow and gets an attenuation factor of zero. If the point of intersection is behind the light source, it's not in shadow. And similarly, if it doesn't intersect any point at all. Our shadow model so far will give you sharp shadows like this. But how about soft shadows like this one on the ceiling? Check out this nice soft penumbra. If you zoom out, you'll see that there are a couple of bright areas that are reflecting light to the ceiling. This bright area acts like an area light source, which we can approximate as a grid of point light sources. Okay, so let's consider a dark point in the middle of the shadow. None of the rays from our point light sources reach that point, which is why it looks so dark. But this point in the penumbra receives some of the light, so it's not quite as dark. All right, so now we know how to make soft shadows. But how about colored shadows? Wait, can shadows even be colored? Here's a photo from later in the day, where patches on the brightly colored carpet are lit up. Different points in the carpet and floor reflect differently colored light causing a rainbow colored shadow on the ceiling. Let's increase contrast a bit to see it better. Wow, so cool. This area gets mostly blue and yellow light. This part gets red and yellow, and this area gets red and blue. To model colored shadows and soft shadows, we just need to sum these equations over multiple light sources. Another type of colored shadow comes from transparent objects, like these balloons. A simple way to model these is to attenuate the light each time the ray enters or leaves the object. The attenuation factor, KT, may have different red, green, and blue values to simulate different colored balloons or other thin shell transparent materials. The total attenuation is the element-wise product of all these KT terms, denoted with this empty circle. So if KT attenuates all but 0.7 of the blue light, leaving about a third, after two intersections, it will attenuate about half. And if there's another transparent object on the way to the light source, its coefficients are multiplied in as well. 
Other transparent objects, like glass and water, attenuate volumetrically and use equations like this. Here's the color version. The shadow attenuation term is now a vector that multiplies element-wise. Join us for part three, where we add in distance attenuation, reflection, refraction, and complete our ray tracer.